Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 29 of the chapter Hello Ilkins and Hello Arenes. We were doing the properties of Hello Arenes and we have studied about the nucleophilic substitution reactions of Hello Arenes. In this video, I'm going to start explaining electrophilic substitution, the second type of reactions, that is electrophilic substitution of halo arenes. And the third category and the last category of reactions that we would be studying would be the reactions with metals. But first, let us do electrophilic substitution reaction in this video and in the next one. Electrophilic substitution. You have studied electrophilic substitution of benzene in class 11 where you know that this is a reaction in which halogenation, nitration, sulfonation and Friedel-Crafts alkylation and acylation are done. So in the nucleus, that is in the benzene ring, chlorine or any halogen when it is substituted, it is known as the electrophilic substitution of or halogenation of benzene ring. If the nitro group is being added, we call it the nitration. If sulfonate a sulfonate is being produced, we call it a sulfonation, we call it sulfonation. And if alkylation or acylation, that is methylation, ethylation or acylation takes place, we call it the Friedel-Crafts alkylation or acylation. These reactions are very similar. They are very, uh, they have the same reagents, the same reaction is taking place, but only the f difference being from that, that here in the benzene ring, a halogen is already attached to the benzene ring. And we have studied that the halogen is a deactivating group and it is orthoparadirecting. You already are aware of this. So this has an effect on the products. The products that you get here would not be one product, it would be two products. One would be an orthoisomer and the other would be a paraisomer. Otherwise, the reactions are the same. So let us come to halogenation. You have chlorobenzene. And when chlorobenzene reacts with chlorine, which means you are carrying out the chlorination of chlorobenzene, this reaction takes place in the presence of um, a Lewis acid. For example, you have anhydrous AlCl3 or you have FeCl3 or FeBr3. All of these act as Lewis acids. So anhydrous, there should be no water. So it would be anhydrous AlCl3, FeCl3 and FeBr3 in the presence of these halogenation takes place by electrophilic substitution. And you get a mixture of two compounds that is the para-isomer and the or orthoisomer. What would this be called? The para-isomer would be called 1,4-dichlorobenzene and the ortho would be 1,2-dichlorobenzene. Out of these, the para-isomer is the major product and the ortho-isomer is the minor product. You will find the para-product to be uh, present in, uh, would be the major product, would be the, a greater percentage of the para-product would be formed while the ortho-product would be lesser. The para-product is usually more symmetrical and therefore it is more stable. So this is usually the major product in all of the electrophilic substitution reactions. The second type of reaction is nitration. In nitration, you again have chlorobenzene. Nitration takes place in the presence of a nitrating mixture. What is nitrating mixture? HNO3 is nitric acid. Nitric acid provides the NO2 and in the presence of concentrated H2SO4. So both of these, nitric acid itself is a very strong acid and H2SO4 is the strongest acid. So when both of them together are uh, mixed, it forms an extremely strong mixture, which is known as the nitrating mixture. So you have HNO3 in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid. You again get a mixture of ortho and para, um, uh, para products, uh, para substituted nitro products. And these, again, you will find that the para product would be the major product and the ortho product would be the minor product. So you have nitro here at the ortho position and you have nitro here at the para position. How would you name these uh, hydrocarbons? You know, when you have two substituents, you name the one the, uh, that, has, uh, that is alphabetically lower first. So chlorine, you had chlorobenzene, so chlorine would be the first one. So we'll say one chloro four nitrobenzene right? Then comes sulfonation. You're carrying out the sulfonation of chlorobenzene. For sulfonation to take place, just as we had for nitration to take place, we needed nitric acid in the presence of sulfuric acid. Sulfonation would take place 
by sulfuric acid but this sulfuric acid should be under drastic conditions it should be really it should be concentrated and it should be hot so it should be so hot that it is fuming sulfuric acid so in the presence of fuming sulfuric acid and the other name for fuming sulfuric acid is oleum highly concentrated sulfuric acid hot so oleum in the presence of oleum chlorobenzene will give you the the sulfonated product so this would be 2 chlorobenzene sulfonic acid now, SO3H is stronger or it is higher up in the uh, in the priority when you are naming a hydrocarbon since it is higher up it gets the lower locant right so SO3H here whenever you have the ring where SO3H is attached to it this carbon will become the first carbon so here this is this chlorine would then be the second carbon so it would be 2 chlorobenzene sulfonic acid. So benzene sulfonic acid becomes the main, uh, the main compound. And again here this is the para product. So this would be 4 chlorobenzene sulfonic acid. The sulfonic acid uh, functional group would get priority and therefore your locant would be lower for the sulfonic acid. Anyway, this is just nomenclature that I'm mentioning. But what you have to focus on is that when you make chlorobenzene react with oleum it results in the formation of uh, chlorobenzene sulfonic acid ortho and para and again it is the para isomer which would be more stable and therefore it would be the major product we now come to friedel crafts reaction in friedel crafts reaction the two processes two additions take place uh, what electrophilic sub I shouldn't call it addition substitutions two substitutions takes take place in one the hydrogen of the benzene ring is being substituted by an alkyl group so that is called Friedel Crafts alkylation and in the second type in Friedel Crafts you have acylation taking place so it is called Friedel Crafts acylation now this is chlorobenzene and you have methyl chloride and in the presence of anhydrous AlCl3 again, you carry out this reaction and one of the hydrogens gets substituted by the methyl group. So you get you get one chloro two methyl benzene. And this would be four chloro, uh, sorry, one chloro, four methyl benzene. And since this is the para product, this would be the major product. Similarly, in the presence of AlCl3 and anhydrous AlCl3 and CH3COCl, you get the Cl is removed, the COCH3 gets attached, that is the acyl group gets attached to the benzene ring and therefore this is known as the Friedel Crafts acylation. So you get chlorine and here you'll have the CO and CH3 at the ortho position, COCH3 at the para position. Right? So this was uh, electrophilic substitution reaction. Now we in order to understand why we got these products and how we got these products we need to know the mechanism of electrophilic substitution reaction. Mechanism of electrophilic substitution you have again done in class 11 but this would again be a very good time to revise it. So uh, I will be revising this in the next video. I'll just uh, tell you the three steps that take place. But I would want you to pay attention to one thing before I move on to the next video. That is that look here in the first reaction that is halogenation. We are using anhydrous AlCl3, FeCl3, FeBr3 or basically anhydrous AlCl3 if you see. And anhydrous AlCl3 is used also in alkylation and acylation. Just a little point I would like you to remember before I go to the next video where I'll be explaining uh, the similarity in all these three reactions. So coming to the understanding of these reactions, you must know the mechanism of electrophilic substitution. For electrophilic substitution reaction to take place, it is a three-step reaction. The first step involves the formation of an electrophile. Since it is an electrophilic substitution, first of all, there should be an electrophile to, to substitute uh, a hydrogen in the benzene ring. So first, the first step is generation of an electrophile. And you know, AlCl3 usually reacts with the uh, reacting attacking reagent and it results in the formation of the electrophile. The electrophile is actually the attacking agent because that is the one who has to substitute. 
So generation of electrophile is done by the reagent that you are using and the reactant that you have taken. That produces or generates the electrophile. In the next step what happens the electrophile, electrophile is something that is attracted to electro. So it is positive. If it is positive and it goes and joins the benzene ring, we know at benzene a hydrogen is present here. So this in the second step, the electrophile comes and joins that carbon at the ortho and the para positions, but the hydrogen is still also there. The electrophile is positive in charge. So it transfers the positive charge to the benzene ring. So when it transfers the positive charge to the benzene ring, the benzene ring forms a carbocation. It becomes positively charged, so it is a cation. And since it is made up of the carbon ring, which is the benzene ring, we call it the carbocation. The cation in which the positive charge is present at the carbons, right? So it is known as the carbocation. A carbocation intermediate is formed. So a cation cannot be stable. In order to become stable, it has to lose that positive charge. So the third step is removal of that positive charge. How does that positive charge get removed? That hydrogen which is present at that, uh, at that position where the electrophile has come and attacked and it has attached itself, that hydrogen leaves and it leaves without its electron. It leaves behind its electron and it goes away. The moment it goes away without its electron, it is positively charged. So, and the electron is going to neutralize the positive charge which was there on the ring. So what has, happens as a result of that? The, uh, the product becomes neutral and the proton is lost. The hydrogen goes away as a proton. So the last step would be the removal of the proton from the carbocation intermediate. So these are the three steps that would take place which would lead to the electrophilic substitution reaction in the case of haloarenes. I will explain the mechanism in the next video. With this, I'll wrap up this video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.